Big box, medium box, little box. Yep, oh, we're going to talk about four different games today. Um, we'll start with the ones which are available at Games Expo and then Perfect. give you a couple of little sneaks of what's going to be coming up. I love sneak peeks, don't you everybody? <laughs> so the first one is this rather big, yes. rather big box, which is Red Alert Space Fleet Warfla mm -hmm. Warfare. Mm -hmm. um, it's a game by Richard Borg, mm -hmm. who's well known for oh, yes. um, the Commands and Colors series. Yes, of course. Um, if, if people don't know it, it's games like Memoir 44, mm -hmm. Battle Law, um, and the Commands and Colors Ancients and mm -hmm. Napoleonics games. In the past, PSC has produced The Great War yes. with Richard, which is obviously a, a First World War game. Mm -hmm. um, we have a French expansion for that, which covers the Battle of Verdun, and mm -hmm. a tank expansion, which comes with really cool little plastic tanks. But Richard persuaded us to do um, a big space fleet battle game, yeah, and it is big. Yeah, th this was something I was going to say. Whenever I think uh, PSC, I am thinking that World War II, World War One sort of historical stuff. It's wonderful to see you guys expanding into the, the sci-fi genre and starting to have a play and see what your creative minds can do with that. So uh, for this particular game, is this a two-player starter set? Is it a complete box game? It's, it's for two, two to six players, mm -hmm. but really it's two sides. Mm -hmm. So you could play, most people will play with just two players, mm -hmm. but you could also have one player taking control of one section mm -hmm. of the board each with one yeah. player being an overall admiral in the game uh, as well. I like this idea. Yes. See, I always love that sort of command structure where you can throw it into a game. <laughs> Wait, you mean where you can bully people around? No, <laughs> no, we don't bully people. I just tell people to do stuff and they have to do it. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, so, yeah, th on, this game comes with a, a huge mat rather than yes, a cardboard I, board. I do love laid the look out. of this mat. It's a nice fabric mat. Yes. And I mean, like, I, I like the fact that you've added that extra level of quality. Yeah. Normally in this, it would be cardboard or fold out paper. Having this, such durability. You're not going to break this thing. Yeah, no, you know, And thank if you spill you. coffee on it, it's either an asteroid field or just throw it in the washing <laughs> machine. <laughs> I mean, part, part of the reason Richard wanted to do this game with us is mm -hmm. because we said, yes, we'll do plastic spaceships. Mm -hmm. You get 92 of them wow. in this box. So, so there are a lot of ships in the box. Yeah. Um, and it's also... Um, the mat is about four foot by three foot, so yes. it's it's big. Yeah, you've got um, plenty of game space there. Yeah, we, we wanted, or, or Will, the, the owner of PSC, wanted to put on a bigger mat, but we had to persuade him that people's kitchen tables aren't always aren't always quite so large. Yeah. Well, as that. Uh, see, that, that's a clever thing to, uh, to consider, is just what is the average size of your average yeah. kitchen table that people are going to play on? Because you know, not everybody has a massive hobby hall where they can lay out everything they want. You know, so having something that fits in people's homes, perfect idea. I also love the fact that you've done the pre-colored plastic. That way, yeah. if, let's say I'm a board gamer and I've came along to this, I'm not thinking, oh, well, now I can't tell what's what. It's, it's already there for you, which is a great yeah. detail to have. Yeah, I mean, we've seen people have done some fantastic painting mm -hmm. of the miniatures. I think w with this game, we're kind of appealing both to, to board gamers and miniatures gamers yes. as well. So, so some of the, the paint work we've seen on, on the, the ships has been just amazing. For me, I'd leave them in the, the red and the green colours. That's mm. that's good for me. But yeah, there's some amazing jobs yeah. that people have done yeah. out there. Well, they're instantly to my minimum level because anything I play on the tabletop, I say I need to at least have it colour prime so I know it's mine, I know it's yours. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Um, originally, we were going to use the same sculpts for both fleets. Mm -hmm. um, the, the idea behind it, Richard's history, if you like, on the game, is it's a civil war between yes. the Confederation forces and the Commonwealth forces. Yes. So originally, the idea was that both fleet, fleets would have the same sculpts. Yes. However, through the, the Kickstarter, a lot of our backers started saying they'd really like to see yeah. different fleets yeah. for, the, for the two different sides, or, or unique sculpts for each side. And we we listened to that is yeah. you know we once people started saying it we we could kind of we could see yeah actually that's going to make it a better game so yeah. well it's the beauty of kickstart you get that that nice roll of feedback as yeah. you're still in development and it's yeah. not just okay we've put it out and all of a sudden we need to change something we need to do a 2.0 it can grow and evolve before it actually gets to people, which is perfect. Yeah, exactly. So we had new sculpts made, um, incorporated them into the artwork for the game as well. So we now have two very different looking fleets. And that, that seems to be something that people love yes, in yes, the game, which, yes. is, which is great. Um, I mean, the, the gameplay itself, it's a game on a hex board, mm -hmm. um, which I love because I've played so many miniatures games in the past. And 
if you play them, you know, sometimes things like line of sight or the angle oh, you yes. can turn out yes, are, yes, yes. are very difficult beasts to master at times. Mm -hmm. So having, having hex, hex area movement and, and firing mm -hmm. just makes things nice and streamlined and simple. Yeah. It's well, a, it's sorry, go on. No, 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 it's, 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 it's a good, it's a good light, light war game to get into. There's, mm -hmm. I, I've played a lot of sci-fi games in the past, past yes. or fleet, fleet games in the past. Yes, yes. And they're kind of a, a, li a little more difficult than I like in the yeah. game. So this, this is, has been perfect for, for us. Well, it, it's choosing the level of, the, of a little bit of words <laughs> on the live stream. I can't talk. It's choosing <coughs> the level of your abstraction to actually ensure that your rule system kind of gets out of its own way and yeah. increases, you know, you know, takes away speed bumps and things that make you go, oh, wait, no, I need to stop and check a thing. You, yeah. know, you can just get on with it and get on with having fun with it. Yeah. So I, I totally agree. If it's something that increases your enjoyment of playing, do it every single time. And I think that's that's the thing that Richard Borg's a master of really. Mm -hmm. He has this commands and colours system yes. where the basics are the same no matter what the era. Yeah. But I think he really manages to go away and look at what specifically needs to change or be adapted yes. to make it feel like you're playing something in that period mm -hmm. of warfare. Obviously when it's a space space game that's slightly different because mm -hmm. we, we don't quite know yet. We've all seen Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> but well, I'm, no, I'm not no, sure are they documentaries. Those came true, though. Yeah. You know, we have iPhones now. That might as well be your track order. Yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> what about um, when people disappear in that wobbly line? I don't don't think we've got. No, we're not yet, doing that we? just yet. I mean, like we are getting holographic technology though. Yeah. it's coming along really well. So, uh, so he Richard's kind of taken all all of the ideas that people know from mm -hmm. their, their favourite yes, TV, sci-fi shows and films, mm -hmm. and worked them into the into the game. Mm -hmm. um, Complexity-wise, I'd say Red Alerts. It's it's a step up from games like Memoir Forty Four, mm -hmm. which is kind of like the if you like the entry level version of, yes. of the Commands and Colors system. But it's it's still it's still not a particularly steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. I think in in this one, as much as anything, it's mastering what your different ships are yeah. in the game. Mm -hmm. um, with that in mind, we actually produced a lot of little counters ah. which you can put with, with the units. Well, um, if you pass those over here, I have a, sure. a nice close camera for there us. There we go. All right, so if I have done this right and I've been clever <laughs> and I haven't blocked my shot like so, uh, we should be able to see these. So these are the ones we're talking about, yes? Yes, that's right. So every unit on the table has one of these little counters mm -hmm. with it as a, as a reminder of what the unit is because not everyone's going to instinctively know What's their battleship? What's yes, their cruiser? I mean, we've scaled them. So your battleships are your biggest, your mm -hmm. biggest ships. Um, the fighters are obviously little diddy things, mm -hmm. and the, the cruisers and destroyers are, are kind of in between. Mm -hmm. So we, we provide these little counters, and on there it also tells people how far each unit can move, yep. how far it can shoot, and how many dice it rolls. That's when it very shoots. Useful. Again, it's, it's that sort of self-management that yeah. does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, I, th I think Richard's great at uh, understanding mm -hmm. what what you need to play the game, mm -hmm. what needs to be in there to make it feel like the period that you're actually fighting a battle in, yes. and and then just kind of allowing you to play the game mm -hmm. itself. So the game's card driven. Mm -hmm. The battlefield is the same for all commands and colors games. Yes. It's divided into three different areas. Um, so you have a, a center. Yep. Um, then you have your left flank to where yes, I so am. You have the left flank, which is down here where all of our ships are currently battling, and the right flank out to me, yeah? Yep, that's right. Um, at, at its most basic, you have a hand of cards, which are command cards. Mm -hmm. uh, um, if you like, I can show those off for you. Sure, if you could show the top one especially, but then just Not a problem, through sir. them. Uh, if I've done this right, here we go. So the cards such as that top one, mm -hmm. that tells you, if you play that, you can play, you can activate two units on your left hand yes. flank. Ah, um, there are different cards, so there are some special ones like that which allow you to do, mm -hmm. do different actions as well. That one would allow you to command one unit on your left, one on your right, and I two in your centre. Ah, so you have a hand of normally five or six cards mm -hmm. in your hand, um, and it's then down to you to plot almost like the tempo of the battle. Yes. If you're going to launch an attack on the right because you have a lot of right flank cards, push through the center because that's where your cards are focused, yes. or just kind of maintain a battle line. Mm -hmm. Now this is something that, that's kind of stuck through the whole of Richard's Command and Color series. And to begin with, I, I, I was curious to see whether it would work for space battles because you know, when, when I've seen them on TV, <laughs> it, 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 even when it's big fleets like we have in this game, 
you don't tend to think of it as battles having a centre in the flanks. Yeah. But then, really, most most of these games are based on naval warfare. Yes. So it kind of does it does work. Um, yeah. Well, it, it it flows into I right. Say it was a, a space fighter game. I imagine them to be very quick, nippy, classic dog fighting yeah. style. Whenever I'm thinking big ships, you are thinking that that nice big slow orchestra of a battle. Things exactly. have time to move and shift line up the perfect angle for the massive bombardments yeah and that's that's what i want in every you know big ship game i play be it naval yeah. be it uh you know uh black powder be it space stuff that's what i want and that if that's what you're doing perfect yeah um you're perfect <laughs> well that's that's good that means red alert must be perfect i can <laughs> i can settle for that um when it comes to activating the units yes. you can move them mm -hmm. for the the distances shown on on the u unit mm -hmm. tokens um, you're then mostly going to want to try to shoot things, yes. which is good. Yes. Um, and again, your unit tokens show you how many dice you roll at what particular range. Mm -hmm. So I had a little example I was just oh going to I show see. here. Uh, so it's down here, yes? Yes, it's, th it's the green battleships yes. and red cruisers. I see, So yes. just for this example, we're going to say that the, the green battleships have mm -hmm. activated yes. and they're going to fight against the um, destroyers yeah, sure. so um, th first of all they check the range mm -hmm. which is the next hex along so yes. one they look on their counter and they can see they will roll three dice yes at a range of one hex uh -huh. I'll just roll those okay that's that's good for me uh -huh. um, together like those here I can show them off sure there we go so, what so the dice have, have lots of they have different icons yes. on each side um, so you've rolled a star, a triangle, and an explosion. Yeah. We'll start with the explosion, because that's bound to be good, isn't it? Of course. That's, called a, <laughs> that's called a blast yes. in the game. And essentially, a blast will hit against any different type of ship. It doesn't matter the class of the ship, mm -hmm. who's firing at it. Mm -hmm. That's a hit. Okay. Um, there are a few exceptions where things like big battleships can ignore a blast from a tiny little fighter. Yeah. And then also fighters can ignore blasts from big battleships. It's yeah. that kind of thematic thing, like yeah, the armor where you so get heavy the or they're yeah, so they're so nimble, exactly. Yeah. So blasts are, are great mm -hmm. most of the time, with with a couple of exceptions. Yeah. So that would be one hit yes. on the destroyers. We'll come back to the star in okay. a moment and look instead yeah. at the triangle, the yes. blue one. Okay. Now there's a blue triangle, a mm -hmm. purple square, mm -hmm. and a green circle yes. in the game they are matched to different types of units mm -hmm. so your heaviest ships um, are, um, they have a a, pu a, a purple square mm -hmm. on so them that's yes um, yes that's right mm -hmm. um, your your mid-range ships your strike ships have the blue triangle mm -hmm. which is this yep yep and the fighters have the green circle yes so we've rolled a blue triangle which yes. is great here because that matches ah the destroyer's class, yes. so that counts as a hit against it as well. If, if you rolled the, the purple square or the green circle, yes. you'd have missed. Yeah. Okay. So I'll come back to the star in a moment, because yeah, yeah. that works slightly differently. I have another question on these as well. Oh, good. Um, so that essentially means you've scored two hits mm -hmm. against the destroyer unit. Yes. Unless the destroyer unit had some kind of special card that it could play, mm -hmm. um, that means it removes two of its ships. Oh, okay. So it's a very, very it's quick a, It's a game quick you, playing you, game. You hit yeah. It's devastating. Yeah. Okay. It's, so you need to make sure you're striking first. Yes. It's very important. And also matching up the right ships mm -hmm. against the, the right opponents. So there's no point really sending fighters in against battleships. Yeah. But they'll be great against destroyers oh because yeah. they've got the the, nim the nimble maneuverability. Yeah, they can just start can, chewing yeah, through them. Yeah. So, yeah. I like so you have to think about the way you use your different, different ships in the game. The yellow star in the game is called a star token and they're essentially special command points you can use them for various things in the game mm -hmm. the destroyer if, it, if the destroyer's player had any stars could play them to battle back immediately ah, against the battleships it, nice. it would have to wait for its own turn otherwise but mm -hmm. if you've got enough stars you spend them and you can fight back at nice. that moment you can also use them to repair damage mm -hmm. um, and to, to um, spend on special combat cards mm -hmm. in the game. Now the combat cards, yes. if you wouldn't mind just quickly no showing problem. some of those, they all have a cost in stars mm -hmm. shown on them. So you can yep. see up so at the top, that two one stars costs here, two. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this one also two? Yeah. 
So they, they, they vary in, yeah. oh, in more. terms, there you go. And the, the more points you need to spend, the, the more powerful yeah. that card's going to be. Yeah. They have all sorts of effects in, in the game. It's basically, that's where the sci-fi theme yeah. comes from. So this from is those your cinematic cards. moments. Exactly. Yeah. So Perfect. when you roll a star, although it does no damage, it gains you a star token that you can use in the future. So it's kind of like a tactical advantage. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are also red alert hits. This was that what you were going to ask this about? This I was going to ask, because we have one more symbol on here, which is the red alert symbol here. So what does this do? Okay, they're essentially, it's, it's like a kind of a morale check or a, a suppression mm -hmm. against the, the target unit. If you roll one red alert against the target unit, mm -hmm. it just freaks out a bit and has to retreat to hexes. Ah, uh, okay. Um, but nothing else. Mm -hmm. If you roll two or more, yeah. Um, the unit has to take a red alert token, mm -hmm. and that it effectively means it, it's got some kind of damage which mm -hmm. needs to be repaired, yeah. or that you know the, the crew don't really want to be fighting at the well, moment. You know, mutiny, you've let us <laughs> into a bad one, Captain. <laughs> so you have to do something about it, mm -hmm. and you can repair them with star points. Ah, so while you have a red alert token on a unit, mm -hmm. um, it can't move. Mm -hmm. And it battles with one less dice than it uh, normally would. That's interesting. So, so it's a kind of it's it's kind of like a light damage, but not lasting damage against. And can units. I put multiples of those on a target? Um, if I, I keep th shooting them. No, I think from from memory, I think that you only ever get one red alert token. Mm -hmm. But if you were to roll another red alert, it yeah. would count as a hit against ah. the unit. So you become very vulnerable yeah. at that point. See, that's that's interesting because it means that from my hand, I'm then looking at it going. Okay, it's got the red alert token on it. I maybe need to activate this flank just so I can activate that ship and just so I can get that off there and not be so vulnerable yep. and actually stand the next incoming wave. Yeah, so there's there's a lot to think about mm -hmm. in Red Alert. The, the game itself comes with uh, 10 scenarios mm -hmm. in in the game. We've also produced a number of escalation packs. Ooh, this um, is nice. so what which, uh, that one is a carrier one, so that ah, introduces a so. new unit to the game. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, carrier that comes with fighters. There's also a Dreadnought, which is a, a huge, great battleship, which yes. is pretty scary in yes. play. Me likey big ships. <laughs> um, a Vice Admiral ship, mm -hmm. which, which gives, gives you extra command cards. Um, and there's also the, lo the Logistics and Space Platform pack, uh, which introduces um, pack. that this. one. Long arms. So this ship here. In fact, I want to get a closer look at some of these yeah. ships while we're at it as well. So this, oh yes. So that is a space station. Now they have to remain in orbit of a planet. You mm -hmm. get planets as terrain tiles yeah, yeah. Um, that are laid out in scenarios. Um, it's essentially, it, it can move in orbit around the planet but can't just drift off where it fancies. And it's essentially a big piece of artillery. Ah, I see. It, it fires for several hexes further than anything else in the game. Mm -hmm. And if you're hit by a space station, you know you've been hit. <laughs> you're um, going to feel it. Yeah, so <laughs> they're, they're quite powerful things if, if you get one. The other thing you have are the transport ships, mm -hmm. um, which give you, ev every turn they're in play, they gain you additional star tokens. So although they're not powerful fighting ships, they actually give you more tactical choices. Yeah, I, I like the idea of having more tactical flexibility from ships that I have that I maybe need to defend because that yeah. would again inform my tactical decisions and how am I going to run my battle line. Yeah. You've also got some of the, the bigger ones here. I would love to see this yeah, one. Yeah, this I What bet. is this? That one is a Dreadnought. Oh, yes. This, the style of this is wonderful. And this one is the opposing Dreadnought, which I'll just pop there for now. Uh, I think I like the green better, not just because I'm Irish. <laughs> I do as well. <laughs> I do. I, I always play as a green. Yeah, you see, there's there's something I always imagine whenever humanity finally does reach a star and start building ships like this, we're going to be very big, bulky, yeah. bloppy sort of ship styles. I don't know. Maybe Porsche is going to design one and it'll just be all <laughs> nice, lean curves, or maybe Ferrari will give it a go. <laughs> um, Beautiful stuff. I'll also show you this, which is a carrier. Ah, carrier. So that is accompanied by a number of fighter models which can kind of zip out from the carrier's hex, mm -hmm. fight something, and then return. So they're kind of fun to play with. So these come in the escalation packs, which you, you don't need them to play the game, but it just gives you more flexibility. See, it's, it's nice to have those, those clear-cut expansions. And in your escalation pack, do I get for both sides, or yes. am I buying one pack and one pack? No, it's both sides. You get the same ships for both sides. Nice. So you get a sculpt for each, each of the ships. Mm -hmm. Um, there's normally an additional three scenarios mm -hmm. as well, which introduces that ship, but yeah. then you can build them into your, your yeah, forces so yeah. as well. 
You see, I, I like this idea because let's say you and me had picked up the main box. I had took the green because I'm taking the green. You can have yep. the red. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, but let's say we're then talking about expansions. I can say, well, look, I'll pick up an expansion this month if you pick the one up next month. Yeah. And that lets us both have a, an equal expansion. Exactly. Because sometimes in some games you get that, that arms race where your mate's off building tons of artillery, tons of artillery, tons of artillery, and you're then having to play catch up going, how do I stop this? Yeah. Whereas exactly. with this, you're both getting the exact same addition to your force, and it comes down to how good am I going to use it. Exactly, and exactly. I, I love putting my tactical brain against other people. <laughs> and we've got more expansion packs planned. We've got an additional fleet that we're hoping to release at some point. Ooh, lovely. And ideas for new types of unit as well. Mm -hmm. So Red Alert is going to be expanding. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'd better move on and tell you about some of our other games as yes, well, I think, because I've talked course. for a long time there. It's a big beast of a game. It is. It's worth a bit of chatting. So, we'll so show next you some of this up, way. I'll just quickly show you Battle Ravens. Ah, yes. Now, this I like Battle Ravens because it's my game. Ah, this is one uh, <laughs> Jerry from The Office absolutely adores. Fantastic. He loves That's the idea great. of sh fighting in the Viking shield wall. Yeah. And the way you've designed this, it is such a light game easy abstract game. Yes, I that's right. really like it myself. So the, the artwork as well. Yeah, I think gorgeous. I'll there we go. This is by an artist called Peter Dennis. Mm -hmm. He's very well known in miniatures, miniature wargaming and yep. illustrates a lot of Osprey books. Um, he's also done the um, art for the stands ah, in yes. the game. Yes, I remember. I think we unboxed this quite recently. OK. If you haven't seen these, here they are again. So you get the back side of the guys and the front side. And that's a detail I like, that one side is the front and one side is the yep. back, so you can tell what you're looking at in-game. Um, in, in brief, the game is a shield wall game where the board is divided into six areas. You need to capture three to mm. win. Yes. You place ravens, which are uh, my poetic name for action points, mm -hmm. which allow you to fight, block hits, yes. or move units. Um, everything's very simple mm -hmm. in the game. I'm, I'm not a smart enough man to, <laughs> to design complex games. Um, and you basically batter your opponent for approximately half an hour to 45 minutes to capture three areas yep. to win the game. That's on sale at, at the moment at Expo. All right. Well. Uh, if they're wanting to come along and grab it, where do they find you guys? Um, we're on stand 1252. 1252. So in Hall 1, I'm guessing? Yes, that's okay. right. Uh, also in Hall 1, we have nice. Milito with designer Martin Wallace. Ah, um, let's see. So this. Now, what is this particular game about? Okay, this is a th this is a game of ancient warfare. Mm -hmm. um, it's a card-based game. Yeah. So essentially, it's it's artwork by Peter Dennis again because we absolutely love Peter's art. Yeah. The, Do they have minis? The, no minis in it. It's it's just cards ah, in this I one. See. Um, you lay out um, card terrain mm -hmm. in five columns. Uh -huh. You have to capture three of them to win the game. Mm -hmm. Um, each of the six armies in, in the box has its own kind of unique troops that it uses. Mm -hmm. There are no dice, so you're really having to place your units in the best position, mm -hmm. and you have leader cards to play as well, which give you bonuses ah, in combat. So it's, it's, again, it's about half an hour to play. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a fun little diversion, mm -hmm. I think, with beautiful artwork. Yeah. Um, this is something I'm seeing a lot of at the Expo this year, is there are tons of games which are those light sit down in the pub play games. Yeah. You know, it's not super weighty, not super heavy. You just grab it and go with your friends. Yeah. You know, even though me personally, I love big heavy games. You know, you'll you'll have seen every game I play <laughs> and every game I collect. It's just big heavy, massive army. Yep, I've got seven thousand points of that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and the the other thing with Milito that, that I should say is we have Martin Wallace on mm -hmm. our stand demonstrating how to play ah, the game and fantastic. signing copies as well. So oh, if, cool. if people are here, yes. it, it's well worth popping along just to meet Martin and Definitely. find out about his game. Definitely. One last thing I want to show you. Yes. I'm sure I have a couple of moments for. I think we'll probably tell you about this in more detail at another time, so it will just be a little teaser okay, for now. Okay. Um, oh, big it's stuff. A, a classic old game okay. called Britannia, ah. which is essentially the history of Britain uh -huh. from the coming of the Romans mm -hmm. to the conquest by the Normans. Ah, I first see. published in 1986. It was actually the first board game I ever played. I really? got it for my 12th birthday. <laughs> wow. We're doing a new version of it mm -hmm. with, with the original designer. Plastic minis mm -hmm. um, covering all the different tribes of the time. And backed with, that yes. one is a four player game playing in about three to four hours. So it's a, it's a long game. I like hefty ones. We don't always have time for that ourselves in the uh -huh. office. So we have persuaded Lou, the designer, to make Jewel Britannia. 
ah. two players oh. playing in about 90 minutes. That's it's awesome. A, it's still Britannia, it's mm -hmm. a streamlined version. Mm -hmm. We think that players of the original Britannia will love this, mm -hmm. but it's also a nice way to get into yeah. the game. Um, yeah. Maybe slightly less intimidating than the, well, the four hour epic. This is something you do find is some folks, whenever they, they, they hear the length of game time you're playing, they do get a little intimidated. So it's nice having the, the lighter yeah. option to jump in on. This, this is one, I, I can play this on my games evenings in the week. The, the, the main Britannia, you know, it's an it's a event that we, yeah. we take part in to sit down and play that. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna put this on Kickstarter in July. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will be out um, early in 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the big things on the Kickstarter for us is Stretch Goals will unlock new, new minis for ah. different nations and also for some of the, the leaders that people have heard of through history. Yes. So people like Boudicca, yeah. William the Conqueror, King Arthur. Of course. We're hoping if we unlock the Stretch Goals, we'll have special minis all of those. Fantastic. Is that everything you wanted to cover today? I think that's everything for today. Thank you. I will go back to uh, chatting to people in the hall about Britannia now. Yeah. Well, uh, everybody, uh, don't forget, go across and join the guys in Hall 1 if you want to check out these games. There are some beautiful things to look at. Uh, we will move on here. We'll see you again soon. But do not forget to check out below in this post because we have a massive Monster Apocalypse prize up for grabs. We'll move on. We'll see you again soon.